what's up beautiful people this one we're going to be checking out is gonna be an interesting one it is titled trump will win regardless of what colorado does so in case you're not up to date with the information colorado the supreme court in colorado just recently ruled that trump's name should be taken out of the ballot um, which means in the primary he cannot be a candidate interesting one i'm hearing 12 other states are trying to do the same thing and ron de is speculating that if they push through we'll do the same thing in florida as well it's gonna be interesting but this video the title says trump will win regardless of what happened in colorado it might not just be colorado though colorado though let's get to it welcome back to the special edition of hannity democrats are in panic mode heading into 2024 as Joe Biden's poll numbers continue to plummet nationwide and in the swing states. So, what's the left Wait, game? just before we get into the video, it's funny how, depending on the news channel you're watching, the tone and the language is so different. I feel like yesterday we had seen on CNN or MSNBC, the tone was different. It felt like they were excited for what is happening in Colorado. We also saw an interview with them. Um, jill Winebanks is her name and the tone used in that news channel felt like they were advocating for the democrats to take trump's name out but this one she started by saying the democrats are panicking <laughs> yeah it'd be weird welcome back to the special edition of hannity democrats are in panic mode heading into 2024 as joe biden's poll numbers continue to plummet nationwide and in the swing states so what's the left's game plan? It's simple, change the rules and kick their opponent off the ballot. Earlier today, President Biden declined to comment on the Colorado Supreme Court's decision, but asserted that Trump supported an insurrection. He's absolutely sure. Mm -hmm. Take a look. I don't know whether the 14th Amendment applies or let the court make that decision, but he certainly supported an insurrection. No question about it. None. Zero. And uh, he seems to be doubling down on about everything. Of course, Trump hasn't been charged or convicted of an insurrection, but the left celebrated the court's vast overreach in Colorado. Turns out not everyone is on board. 2024 independent candidate RFK Jr. warned the decision could lead to problems down the road. And South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem said, what they're doing in Colorado is Biden's only hope of winning the election in November. Joining us to tell us more, Governor Noam. I also did state this previously. Now people can reference this, not even in the 2024 elections, maybe in 2030 or 2040s elections, somebody's going to say, oh, in Colorado, this happened to Trump. So we can use this now as a tool. And imagine the state starts splitting, where it's like Florida's like, okay, we're taking um, Biden's name off. Colorado's like, we're taking Trump's name off. Imagine how that's going to be. Yeah, you, <laughs> the political climate in America is going to be tough. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening, Kellyanne. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. I appreciate Absolutely. being with you. So, Governor, I think it's a very important point you make. And RFK Jr., of all people, took to X, formerly known as Twitter, and really gave a robust defense of the people, said that we can't let the courts and political manipulation decide our presidents. That right belongs to the people. But as a governor, what would you say if your highest court was to deny someone access to the ballot? Well, what they're doing is unconstitutional and it has no grounds. I think what is key is what you said earlier, Kellyanne, and that was that he hasn't been charged or convicted mm -hmm. at all of insurrection. And so it's interesting that the Colorado Supreme Court has used this as the basis for their reason for removing him from the ballot. So that's the hypocrisy that we're seeing right here of how they're trying to work the system in a very um, unfair way way because they're so concerned, the left is so concerned about losing this election to President Trump. He will win, uh, make no mistake, regardless of what Colorado does uh, and what their Supreme Court decides, uh, that President Trump will win the primary election, he'll win the general election, and that's because of the left consistently taking extreme measures like this and degrading our society and destroying America from its foundation and up. And if he does win again, I'm sure he'll return to Mount Rushmore to be with you and, uh, the, and everyone else in South Dakota for a July 4th celebration. So, Governor Noem, 
Would you be able to bar Biden from the ballot in your state of South Dakota if, say, he violated that part of the 14th Amendment by unfreezing assets for Iran or allowed terrorists to just openly walk over the southern border? I mean, do you think that you'd have that power or your highest court would have that power? You know, I don't believe so. That's what is so um, interesting. It's, you know, the, the process that the court has is a balance to the, our federal government. Uh, it is a balance to our executive branch, a balance to our legislative branch. Um, you know, so us exerting the kind of influence on the court and their decisions to take that kind of action is really unprecedented. So I trust our South Dakota state laws, our constitution. It gives great guidance to us and our court system understands that their job uh, is to follow statute and give decisions based on the scales of justice. Uh, I'm very proud of what we do here in South Dakota. I would be hopeful that other states would do that and not let liberal judges rewrite the rules of the game to work for their political interests. Uh, this is where the Supreme Court will, should, and I hope will take quick action, strong action to reverse this decision at the lower court and uh, make sure that they do the right thing by the American people and make sure their voices are heard. President Trump will win. And my hope is that they allow this to election to be held fairly and let the people weigh in and to choose the president that they want in the White House. In the interview we had seen yesterday, Ji Wen Bang said, you don't have to be convicted to violate the 14th Amendment. You said She said it has to be an engagement. I think that was the word she used. If you had been engaged with this situation or something similar to this, then it can go through, the ruling can go through. But again, I'm reading different readings I've seen on social media and everywhere. People are saying already the Supreme Court, the United States Supreme Court is not going to, you know, rule the same way Colorado has. And I think they are like six to three um, with Republicans having more on the, you know, Republicans having more seats in the Supreme Court, which to me, I find it kind of weird because I don't think it should be a political thing. I, should, I feel like it should be a, a court thing like by the books not by having republicans or democrats if it's a ruling that should go through it should go through if it's not it shouldn't go through regardless of somebody is a republican or a democrat just saying yesterday's colorado supreme court decision many around president trump but many others are crying election interference we know all about voter exclusion voter intimidation this almost seems like voter elimination supplanting the will of the people with a judicial with judicial uh, imperiousness it just also strikes some people governor Nome, something we're both familiar with that conservatives or center-right voters, Trump supporters being called deplorable, irredeemable, mega MAGA. Now they're being castigated and denigrated in a different way that they can't possibly um, be wise and judicious in their presidential selection. So the Supreme Court of Colorado must do it for them by kicking someone off the ballot. But what do you think of that? I'm sure you hear from people all the time that feel shadow banned and censored and canceled. Um, how, how does this play into that, if at all? You know, I see both sides of it. I see people consistently seeing the hypocrisy and and the corruption that is happening from the left and how they're using this against people that are their enemies uh, in their agenda that they want to pursue. But I also would say, though, Kellyanne, is the more this stuff happens, the more they normalize it. The more often mm -hmm. that they use our judicial system and our Supreme Court to play these political games, to go out and to fundamentally rewrite uh, justice, uh, the more it becomes normal in mm -hmm. America. And that's what is so dangerous is because the more often you see something, the more you don't blink at it the next time that it happens, the more it seems like, oh, well, that's just something that happens. That is increasing so often now in the last year or two where we have our courts being used to punish political opponents uh, in a way that I just don't remember seeing five years ago, six years ago. Now it's being used on a daily basis. I believe that's dangerous for our way of life because uh, that then becomes normal to the American people and they start to think that that is something that is okay. It is not okay. That's what's made America special for so many generations is the fact that we were a country of freedom. We were a country of the people, a republic where they get to decide. We don't live by dictatorships or a direction of uh, an elite few making the decisions for the people. Uh, our motto in South Dakota is under God, the people rule. We enforce that every day uh, by following our Constitution. I would hope in the United States of America we remember what our Constitution says as well.
Well, fortunately, millions and millions of Americans agree with those very points. Governor <laughs> Christy Noem of South Dakota, thank you for joining us. Merry Christmas. Yeah, that was an interesting one. Honestly, I've been asking this question, what could Trump possibly do that every time there's a new weapon coming for him? Like, what is his crime? I've said it. If there's something he's done wrong, put him in jail already. Otherwise, why keep looking for different things to hit him with? You know, it's like you tried the first one, he survived. You tried the second one, he survived. You tried the third one, he survived. I, I would just, like, give up. Like, this man is, is good. Like, I can't win at this point. <laughs> Why do they keep trying? It's, it's getting weird, you know, trying different things. And all these things people are trying. There are other people watching and looking. And lawyers are writing it down. So in the future, somebody's going to reference all these tactics again, like she said, and try to normalize it or try to use it again for a different case. So either way is going to be detrimental. Now, I'm not saying I don't speak ever on who is guilty or who is not, but I'm just saying be careful um, with the kind of policies or how you tweak the justice system. Yeah, the people in the justice system have to be very careful with that. Anyways, let me know what you think about that video. If there's anything you want to add, share, correct, critique, and feel free to do so. Smash the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.